In this video, I'm going to be going over the homework for graphing transform trig functions. Um, so the strategy for all six questions was essentially the same. So the first thing I did was extract key information uh, with respect to the graph. So like the special properties, like what's the amplitude, what's the period, what's the maximum value, minimum value, um, equation of the axis, uh, if there's a horizontal shift, um, and the quarter period. All of this information, if you put it all together, that will enable you to graph one cycle of the trig function. Now in this case, they asked me to graph two, cycle, two cycles for each of the six questions. So uh, when you finish your graph, please don't put arrows in. Uh, just leave it as uh, uh, filled in circles. All right, so the amplitude of the period is two pi over three. And if the period is 2 pi over 3, then the quarter period must be pi over 6. So take 2 pi over 3 and times it by a quarter. The maximum value is 3, minimum value is negative 3. Uh, equation axis is the x-axis, and there's no horizontal shift. So since there's no horizontal shift, oh, I forgot to mention, the a value is negative 3, which means there's a reflection with respect to the x-axis. So instead of plotting my first point as a maximum like the regular cosine function would have been uh, I'm going to uh, plot the minimum point so I start at negative 3 since there's no horizontal shift this question is a little easier because my uh, x-axis scaling is quite simply the quarter period so pi over 6 over pi over 6 over pi over 6 over pi over 6 over you go quarter period forward to plot each subsequent key point okay you have to go quarter period forward every single time otherwise you won't get a beautiful symmetrical wave okay so um yeah these four points divide your one cycle into uh, quarters so you plot the five points and then repeat the pattern and you have two cycles okay so let's try next one the next one, we have a vertical translation. That's the only thing different about uh, this question compared to the first question. So this one is a regular cosine wave. When I, when I plot those five points, the first five points, I'm going to get the regular cosine wave. because it's So it's going to start a maximum this time instead of a minimum. So uh, scale the y-axis using the max and min values. Uh, and then scale the x-axis. This one is the logic is exactly the same as question one. The scaling for the x-axis, I'm still gonna do um, the quarter period. This is my scaling for the x-axis because there's no horizontal shift. So yeah, plot the uh, five points and then repeat the pattern. So uh, I have two cycles. Okay, so for the third question, uh, let's see. So nothing much is different about this one. I'd argue number three and number two are essentially the same because uh, you have some vertical shift and you have uh, no horizontal shift, which means the quarter period uh, could be the scaling you, you use for the x-axis. Okay, let's try number four. Okay, how about number four? Let's see. Number four is starting to get interesting. Actually, number four was, I think, the, arguably the most interesting. Because with number four, so you extract all the key information, but you'll notice that the p quarter period is pi over six. And the horizontal shift is pi over four to the left. So what you want to do is, is be able to plot all five points, all five key points for one cycle to be where the grid lines intersect. So if you want to do that, you need to express your quarter period and your horizontal shift as a multiple of the same value. So in this case, we expressed uh, pi over six as two pi over 12, and pi over four as three pi over 12. So we express the horizontal shift and the quarter period 
to both be a multiple of pi over 12. And that works out perfectly because if you set your x-axis scaling to be pi over 12, then you'll be able to, every point that you plot will be uh, where the grid lines intersect. Okay, so the, the strategy here is to find the lowest common denominator. And if you do that, then you'll be able to uh, create a nice scale for the x-axis and you, you'll be able to plot all five points for one cycle very nicely. Um, yep, the, the y-axis scaling is pretty easy because we're working with whole numbers. So like a max value of four and negative four, that's pretty easy to work with. Even in the previous examples, um, yeah, because you're, you're used to working with whole numbers or integers. But with, with fractions, you need to uh, find the lowest common denominator. Uh, I just want to mention, for example, three, I forgot to mention. Uh, my point here uh, is not where the grid lines intersect. But this one, I, I didn't make, the, um, make that, um, I didn't try to make this point to be where the grid lines intersect because if I did that, I would need a lot more space because the numbers just didn't work out nicely. The max value is negative five and the min value is negative 11. And I can't scale the, the y-axis very nicely. So instead I've just, I just chose to do uh, uh, each box for the y-axis is two instead of one because I just didn't want to waste my graph paper. Okay, so let's try five and six. So five, yeah, five was pretty boring to be honest with you because the quarter period is pi over eight and the horizontal shift is three pi over eight to the left. So I did not require to do any manipulation um, because denominators were already common. So since the quarter period is pi over eight and the horizontal shift is three pi over eight to the left, I set my x-axis scaling to be pi over eight. Uh, yeah, amplitude, all that. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, really not much to say. Um, uh, if you're struggling to get the max and min value, all I have to do is say you start at the middle, negative 9, and you add by 4, and you subtract by 4. That's how you reach the top of the wave, and that's how you reach the bottom of the wave. Okay, so for number 6, the only thing that we need to worry about here is don't forget to factor out k. Uh, once you factor out k, you'll realize that a quarter period is pi over 6, and the horizontal shift is pi over 2 to the right. Now this question, um, yes, it may require some manipulation, but uh, I would argue this one's a lot more obvious than question 4. So hopefully you know that pi over 2 is a multiple of pi over 6. If you didn't realize it, then you can do the math and show yourself pi over 2 is equal to 3 pi over 6. Okay, so clearly pi over 2 is a multiple of pi over 6. And if you write it down as 3 pi over 6, it becomes very obvious that when you scale your x-axis, pi over 6 is a great idea. So the max value uh, for a number 6 is negative 7 and the min value is negative 9. So this time, since I had so much of my graph paper left, I, uh, I showed you all my points. I, I made um, all the key points um, to be at where the grid lines intersect. Um, I didn't do that for, I believe it was question three, yes. Uh, but that's because I just, I just wanted to save some graph paper. Okay, uh, so that's how you graph uh, trig functions. Extract the properties, scale the x-axis and y-axis appropriately, and then you'll be able to plot the points.